A big part of my print-on-demand success story has involved leveraging complementary income streams, even if it's within a single income stream. So in the case of print-on-demand, I didn't just settle for selling print-on-demand products on one marketplace. I learned Amazon first, and then as soon as I learned about the opportunity to sell print-on-demand on marketplaces like Etsy and Redbubble, I expanded to them. And since then, I've obviously expanded to even more marketplaces, but that inspired this video because I want to talk about how you can basically arbitrage in a way the work that you do on Amazon or the opportunity you find on Amazon to sell print on demand and then send it over to a platform like Etsy and how you can expedite this process with a few different tools. So let's get to it. Now, what I'm about to show you is a process that I actually use for my print on demand business. Everything I show you is going to be linked in the description if you want to follow along. So I'm going to start with my Amazon merch research. In my mind, Amazon is the best opportunity to sell print on demand and pretty much anything. OK, so I always optimize for Amazon. That's just my personal preference. So in Merch Dominator, which specifically looks at Amazon, now they are actually building an Etsy tool and they have a Redbubble integration as well, but I'm using it mainly for Amazon research. I'm gonna click MBA and KDP and then go to best sellers. Now I'm not going to type anything into the search bar. I'm just gonna leave it at best sellers. Uh, you've seen me in previous weeks change the sorting to newest, but I don't actually even need to do that. I can just look at the uh, organic bestsellers, the protected brands are automatically filtered out. So these should be safe. Although I do always recommend, you know, do a quick trademark search, try to make sure and be familiar with the content policy, of course, of what Amazon allows and doesn't allow. But I can just scroll through and look for opportunity on Amazon. By the way, uh, I, this also assumes that we're all trying to be successful. So if you're watching this video, I'm making the assumption that you want to be successful implying you want to make sales and make money. The best way to do that is to look at what people are actually buying and cater to that existing demand. Some people say, Ryan, you're just copying these. No, 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 no one's copying anything. We're using tools like this to audit existing demand and then sell products to those people, right? That I know that's simple to say, but you'd be surprised at some of the comments I get. So it looks like at a glance, like what is the number one bestseller there? 100 days of school, level 100 days of school unlocked. Um, in that same row, the number three spot, 100 days of school. Number five spot, 100 days of school. Number seven spot, another 100 days of school. Number eight spot, 100 days sprinkled with fun. So are you guys seeing a trend here? I think this is a good niche to be selling in right now. What do you say? So what I'm gonna do is jump on over now to Everbe, which is one of the premier Etsy research tools. And they have you know tools all around to help us Etsy sellers. And you can either install the Chrome extension or the web app actually works in their website. So you can go up to the top where it says try for free and click that and go into the web app. Within the web app, I went and I clicked product analytics on the sidebar. And what I'm gonna do is based on what we saw here in Merch Dominator that's selling well on Amazon, I'm going to type in 100 days of school, okay? And I will do a search. Now I could go and type 100 days of school shirt and that would most likely alter the results a little bit. But because, and the reason I'm saying this is because what you're gonna notice, guys, is that there are a lot of um, digital downloads indexed here. And uh, I'm implying that I wanna sell a t-shirt, right? Because that's what I would sell on Amazon. I would at least start there. But uh, you're gonna see on Etsy, because they allow digital files and it's so prevalent there, you're also gonna see some of those mixed in. So keep an eye on the price column, all right? Because that's a good way of telling at a glance if it's a you know apparel product or a digital download. Now I typically like to sort by monthly sales to start. So click that column. And now we see the uh, products with the highest monthly sales listed to start. Of course, a lot of them are the uh, low priced digital download files where people are selling to sellers. People are selling to people like you and me. Um, by the way, this is not a bad place to start. If you want to enter this niche that Merch Dominator gave us, the first niche that we're going to look at, 100 days of school, uh, you know, you can click any of these and then go to the listing on Etsy and hey, if you don't have any good designs for this niche, perhaps start here. You can purchase this uh, on Etsy. Of course, just read the uh, usage rights and make sure that you can monetize it by selling it on apparel products. Typically, that's what you're paying for. So anyways, uh, I'm going to try to scroll past. Again, I'm looking at the price column here. I'm looking for some apparel products. 
this is what I really wanted to show you. So this one right here says in my teacher era sweatshirt. Um, perhaps we can find one that says like 100 days of school. So if you keep scrolling, uh, Everby will go fetch more designs right here. Boom. 100 days of school shirt right here in front of us. Happy 100th day of school. So if I want to list this on Etsy, and this is kind of operating under the assumption that we've created a design and listed it on Amazon first, because that's what I always prioritize is Amazon, like I mentioned earlier. I can then take my same design listed on a shirt on Etsy using something like the Printful integration. They have a lot of different types of shirts we can choose from. And then just to expedite the process, guys, let me hide myself for a second. Over here on the sidebar on Everbee, number one, you can see all of the analytics for the product. Monthly sales estimated about 49 a month. Monthly revenue, total sales over 1,000. So this is a really strong listing and we can go and grab their tags right here. You can literally click one button to copy them. And then when you create your listing for Etsy, you can pop over to um, whatever you're using to create the listing and just literally paste. Now I wanted to show you guys um, what the tags actually look like. So in Notepad++, this step is not required by the way, but you can paste them and review them, change them however you see fit. Uh, the whole purpose of this though, is that Everbee is going to Etsy, looking at their product database, indexing as many products as possible. Then we have a search function so we can look for this specific niche. We can sort by what are the best sellers and then copy the tags of the best sellers to optimize our SEO. Of course, beyond that, you know, we can also spy on the listing, look at how they're doing their title. Um, you know, if you need inspiration, look at how they're doing their shirts as well, since these are some of the best sellers. That's how I would go about not just doing the minimum to take my Amazon optimized product and list it on Etsy, but try to actually do a good job getting it on Etsy and giving it a chance to be successful, right? Like there, on Etsy, you have to go a little bit above and beyond. I think most of us are probably aware of what I mean when I say that. You can't just use the default mockups. You have to go a little bit out of your way to make nicer mockups. Um, you can't, you know, you have to do 13 tags, 20 character limit. Stuff like that takes time. This is why Everbee can save you so much time. So let's go through at least one more example. It looks like Valentine's Day is the next big predominant niche that's trending right now. So we can go over here to Everbee again and say like Valentine's Day shirt of course there's plenty of sub niches so if you wanted to you could get a little bit more specific than that like i steal hearts how about that one i steal hearts uh valentine's day design so we can literally and here by the way here is the uh, i steal hearts t-rex dino the way you do a title for amazon probably not the exact same way i would do it for etsy it's definitely a little bit nuanced but we can say something like i steal hearts shirt and now we can see here some of the best sellers are doing you know 16 sales a month that's like a sale every other day uh, here's one that's an SVG, you know, right underneath there. So just be careful if you are um, leveraging, you know, tools like Everbee to expedite your SEO and, you know, get quality SEO by, you know, again, looking at the best sellers, the people who are essentially achieving that level of success that we want to emulate. Uh, just make sure that you don't copy like tags for a digital download uh, into a listing that is not a digital download. Like I said, I'm optimizing most likely to at least to start with for t-shirts. So if I were to grab these tags and pull them into my uh, notepad again i'm just going to split it into new lines right here you know former web developer here so pretty pretty comfortable doing this like i would probably do a bulk replace on svg with shirt or you know a more appropriate one might be like t since it's the same three letter word um that way it should work so valentine and then maybe switch a couple of them up with shirt as well kind of do it as you see fit guys um and then look for things that don't make sense like t files for cricket does not make sense. Um, T-Rex Valentine's Day, something like that, right? T-Rex Valentine's Day, since the design itself had the T-Rex and it says, I steal hearts. So guys, that's what I wanted to show you though. Like sometimes you can use these tools in conjunction and really give yourself a leg up and really avoid cutting corners. Cause it's one thing to say, hey, like I sell print on demand on Amazon and now I wanna, you know, offer it for sale on Etsy and do the minimum and then say, oh, that was a waste of time. I I'm, I'm, wasn't successful. The bar has been raised really high on Etsy. If you guys haven't noticed, there's so many people out there giving away great free content on places like YouTube of how to succeed as an Etsy print on demand seller. The result of that, if you guys haven't seen my shop review series that I've been dropping on Saturdays for over a year now, we're coming up on episode 100 in just a few days. The bar is extremely high. People who have like 10 sales on Etsy 
have shops that are like expert quality. So you can't do the minimum. And that's where tools like Everbee come in to help you at least from an SEO perspective, but also like identifying where are the sales, you know, taking place in these niches and then go study your competition and emulate them. Because uh, as a friend of the channel, Steven likes to say, success leaves clues. Steven at Hello Custom, shout out to him. So guys, thank you for checking this out. I'm gonna drop links to Merch Dominator and Everbee in the description. You saw how I use them kind of back and forth to play off of each other. And you can also use it to optimize for Etsy to Amazon as well if that's your preference, but I do recommend selling on both of those major e-commerce marketplaces as well as, you know, eBay, Walmart, even Redbubble, um, you know, that's kind of up in the air if you want to. So guys, thank you for watching. Please hit that like button and subscribe on your way out and I'll see you soon with a new video.